These four pillars, as we discussed earlier, touch everything from our agriculture through our retail. And when we defined these goals, one of the major things we took into consideration was what are our impacts beyond our brewery walls? Historically, we've overachieved on our uh, sustainability goals that have been about water usage, route optimization in our dedicated fleets, in areas that we own as a business. When we define these goals, we took into consideration much larger worldly goals and tried to figure out how we could drive an impact beyond our brewery walls. So example, water stewardship historically had been water usage. How do you have less water usage per barrel of beer made? Now it's, instead of monitoring or just focusing on the water coming into your pipe to your brewery, focusing on the source of that water, making sure the community, the environment, the watershed itself is going to be able to continue providing water to the communities and to our breweries. So we did that in each of our four goals, expanded it beyond our walls. The area I'm diving a bit more into detail on today is tied to our carbon footprint, which our goal is to source 100% of our purchased electricity from renewable sources and then reduce our carbon footprint by 25%. That doesn't seem that crazy, but this is a science-based target, which means if you're going to set a science-based target and more than 40% of your carbon footprint resides within your external suppliers or third-party suppliers, then you have to include their scope in your target. So that 25% is not just our operations. It is our packaging suppliers that are third party. It is our logistics providers that are third parties. It is even our retail cooler space that is owned by third parties. That accounts for about 80% of our carbon footprint. So this 25% goal, we can't achieve even if we reduced every single emission out of our own operations. We'd still have 5% to go. So that's a massive undertaking. I love that Emerson touched on uh, having to manage complex supply chains and coordinate suppliers towards a collective action. And that's exactly what we're doing in each one of these areas. And really, what is the foundation for these? We're not experts in every single area of sustainability. We don't have experts driving change in watersheds. But there's experts out there that came together with governments, external stakeholders, communities, companies, and defined the 2030 UN's uh, sustainability development goals. And these were the foundations for how we decided to push our goals beyond our brewery walls. So these are the areas of the 17 UN SDGs that we directly impact, and we catered our goals to drive change in those areas. So we understand we're part of a much larger ecosystem. Yeah, the beer industry is going to mirror a lot of other manufacturing industries, but ultimately, we need to be aligned with every single community, public entity, individual, and company out there. And this was a way for us to design goals to do that. So this is all our foundation for sustainability. And again, we like to say from seed to sip, sustainability is important to us. And overall, sustainability is our business. One of our quotes, from, one of my favorite quotes from our CEO is, sustainability is not something adjacent to our business or something nice to have. Sustainability is our business. Beer, again, is a natural product and requires a healthy environment and thriving communities. So without it, there's not a feasible way to have a company in the next 100 plus years. And that's what we're here to do. We want to continue bringing people together for the next 100 plus years for a better world. All right. So with that kind of foundation of our supply chain and the structure that we set up to overall guide collective action within our com company and supply chain, we also have very large consumer-facing brands. So I think you may have heard of a couple of our brands. Um, and a lot of communication can come through those. And we have a responsibility, being a leader in the consumer world, to drive education and awareness and action towards these. So some of the ways we've activated this this year, um, that first one is a screenshot from our Super Bowl commercial, where Budweiser highlighted the fact that they're now brewed with 100% wind-powered electricity. All of the purchased electricity used to make Budweiser comes from our giant wind farm in Oklahoma. That, that week, we also dedicated enough, or <laughs> donated enough uh, renewable electricity to power the city of Atlanta for Super Bowl week. And this drove an immense amount of consumer education and awareness around renewable electricity, which is not always a subject people talk about, especially during the Super Bowl. The next area we focused on, the picture of this truck over here, um, is actually a Nikola hydrogen-powered truck. So in 2017, we, we pre-ordered up to 800 hydrogen-powered trucks for our long-haul fleet. 
And that manifested itself this, this last year, or this current year, 2019, in their Nicola World event, where we pulled together thousands of people around the world to start the inaugural annual event, highlighting changes within the transportation industry and bringing hydrogen fuel to long haul fleets. And then the third major component that uh, we had this year was in June on, uh, <clears throat> when we actually signed a giant wooden contract with the magnifying glass with the sun to celebrate that was kind of the circus part of it, but we were celebrating the fact that we had signed a contract to cover the other 50% of our electricity need um, through a solar power plant here in the US. And that's the seventh largest commercial um, installation of solar power that's been contracted so far to date. So we celebrated that announcement because with that, when that comes online in 2021, 100% of our electricity in the US will be purchased from renewable sources. So we'll be achieving that goal four years early. So all of these put together achieved over 4 point, or 2.4 billion impressions, over 4,000 media um, placements, all driving consumer awareness around work and sustainability and how companies, individuals, governments, et cetera, can get involved. And big brands that are interacting with consumers are increasingly getting to have this responsibility and should start increasingly acting in a way to commu at least communicate and educate, if not communicate direct action that that brand is doing. <clears throat>